Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight, where we look at what's really going on in the world of the Bricks. Now, at the recent Bricks Summit, the topic of the group's expansion was raised again. Now, most of you will remember that the Bricks Summit began to expand at last year's summit in Johannesburg, and the current summit com it comprised of nine members, with one semi-joined member, Saudi Arabia. Now, additionally, t delegations from 24 further countries arrived in Kazan. The total number of applications for accession to the group exceeding 30. Now, while no decisions on expansion at the current summit were made, a list of BRICS partner states was agreed upon by the current members. Now, prior to this, the concept of partner states didn't actually exist. I mean, the status of partner country is recognised within the Shanghai Cooperation Organisation, which includes three of the four founders of BRICS, China, India and Russia. In the SCO, this status represents a step towards full membership of the organisation and it's worked quite successfully. And it looks like it's going to be a similar process occurring in the BRICS. Now, it's important to note that not all the partner states will necessarily be accepted into the organisation at the next summit or even the one after that. However, I think the majority will be, which will effectively expand the format of the association to that of a full-fledged organisation, as Vladimir Putin has already observed. So, who exactly has been granted this status? Well, approximately one-third of the applicants, representing 13 states, were successful. Now, this, the list hasn't actually been officially published, but it has been agreed on, and it would appear that the final clarifications with the candidates is still underway. However, unofficially, I've got no pretty much which members are in the running for BRICS membership, and the countries in question are Algeria, Belarus, Bolivia, Vietnam, Indonesia, Kazakhstan, Cuba, Malaysia, Nigeria, Thailand, Turkey, Uganda and Uzbekistan. Now, there was no actual formal qualification for getting partner status, except by those by, like Sergei Rabakov, the Deputy Foreign Minister, says that the countries are good neighbours and do not participate in unilateral Ill illegitimate sanctions against any of the other BRICS countries. Now, it's evident that each of the founding members of BRICS has its own preferences for who it would like to join. Consequently, the assignment of partner status is contingent upon the consent of at least the three of the BRICS pillars, which is Russia, China and India. Now, and, and the new Islamic group are obviously going to have a, a sort of a, a bit of focus in it. Now, in light of the above, it's evident that the 13... Uh, uh, partners in question, in fact, the main candidates for MT, plus the co composition of these groups is highly indicative that can be classified into several categories. First group comprises the three post-Soviet republics. Their countries in question are the aforementioned Belarus, Kazakhstan and um, Uzbekistan. I mean, uh, although Uzbekistan doesn't actually have such a status, but it does have friendly relationship with Russia and good relations with India. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund my channel and the website, seobricksinsight.com. It's got loads of great articles on it. You should visit it. Further develop it. You can do this by making a small donation, which you can do by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. And everybody donates does get a personal thank you from me, and I'm actually thanking you all now for watching. Now, the second group is countries of the Southeast Asia, which are all members of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, ASEAN. Now, their region is significant strategically for China, for example. And it's of great importance to India, and it's also closely connected with Russia. Now, four ASEAN countries have been designated as partners, and these are Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, and Vietnam. Now, Asia, ASEAN, is a key region for China, and there's a major desire there for other countries to be involved in BRICS. For example, the current ASEAN president, the head of state of Laos, was in Kazan. So it seems likely that the representation of Southeast Asia will certainly become a major presence in BRICS. 
and one of its supporting columns. And this will add to the influence of China, Russia, India, the Arab, Africa and Latin America. Now, the importance of Asia will continue to grow in coming decades, not only due to its strategic location at the crossroads of global trade routes, but also as a result of its pivotal role in American efforts to exert pressure on China. Now, the countries of Southeast Asia are seeking to get stop being caught in the crossfire of the potential conflict between the US and China. However, the pressure from the US is pushing them towards rapprochement with the Russia-China-India alliance BRICS. Now, the third group is the Arab world. While Algeria is not formally a member, Saudi Arabia is on the verge of confirming its finally its membership. And while Algeria uh, wants to be in it, the other participants believe that it's going to be uh, given full accession and, and in the near future, and that's why it's not on the list of partners. I mean, Algeria should have been accepted into BRICS during the first expansion. However, its candidacy was rejected by India in favour of Ethiopia. And that was apparently partly due to French influence and Paris's relations with uh, Algeria, which now have particularly got worse. So it's clear that the situation will be resolved in the near future and Algeria will become a full member of BRICS. Now this is going to result in a more representative uh, Arab faction within the organisation. When you'll have Egypt, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates and Algeria. Additionally, with several other countries from the Arab world, including Syria and Bahrain, also in the process of joining. Now the fourth group is in Africa namely Nigeria and Uganda. The choice is based on sound reasoning. I mean, Nigeria is the largest country in uh, Africa by population and its second largest economy. And it's evolved beyond its historical association with the British Commonwealth and the Anglo-Saxon influence. Uganda, much the same, and under the leadership of the former partisan, partisan Yoweri Museveni for over a third of a century, is independent and is self-confident and it has a strong relationship with both Russia and China. So with their inclusion, the African contingent will provide a formidable and influential presence of Africa within the BRICS alliance. Now, with the members of like South Africa, Nigeria, Ethiopia being the top three economies, plus uh, Uganda, there are several other candidates going to be joining in. Now, the next group is obviously is Latin America. The final two candidates countries are Bolivia and Cuba. Now, it's possible that Venezuela could have been included, but it seems that Brazil's position, because its president, uh, Lula, is unhappy with the policies of Nicolas Maduro, and that may have paid a, a decision, a role in the decision for the blackballing or veto, if you like. In general, the situation in Latin America is complex. IG, Argentina wanted to join, but then changed the government with the pro-American Mali, right, replacing the Peronists who'd been friendly towards Russia and China, and the country decided not to join. However, the inclusion of Cuba, which is a long-standing ally of Russia and China, plus Bolivia, a country with significant economic potential into the BRICS group, demonstrate that Brazil's not the only country with global ambitions and a desire to expand its network of partners. Now, I think it's likely that Argentina will turn and become a member of the BRICS in the near future. It doesn't really have a choice. It's, its economy is dependent to a great extent on uh, on China, and it was stupid for it not to join. Now, the only country, other country left is Turkey. Should it join, it would be classified as part of the Muslim faction of BRICS. The current currently is three Arab countries. Egypt, Saudi Arabia and the UEA, plus obviously Iran, which is Persian, although it's Muslim. Yeah. However, with the largest Islamic country by population, Indonesia, Malaysia, Algeria, Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan, they'll become the largest uh, bloc in BRICS by number of members. I mean, of the 23 countries, including the members and partners, nine will belong to the Islamic world, which... It, further emphasizes the significant role it's been assigned in shaping the new post-Western world order. Plus, other Muslim countries have indicated their intention to join this association. So it's evident that the growth and expansion of BRICS will be gradual, but the direction of the movement and the meaning of the association is clear. And of course, history only continues to serve its and confirm its relevance. I mean, the key requirement for the movements or, organised at this stage is resilience. 
as the Chinese leader Xi Jinping perceptively observed, in the context of a new era of global turbulence and transformation, we are confronted with a pivotal decision. It must be redirected back to the path of peaceful development. So, with the Russian writer uh, Chesnyevsky, what is to be done? And the main character demonstrated considerable resolve and determination when pursuing his uh, objectives. I mean, fortitude is a quality that is particularly valuable in current circumstances. In challenging times, it's crucial to persevere in the face of adversity, demonstrating unwavering resolve, courage, and the agility plus ability to adapt to rapid change. In China, the acronym BRICS is written in hieroglyphs as golden BRICS, which is pretty apt. So, that's the situation with the BRICS partner status. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, please like, share and subscribe. And if you want to help me out, press the thanks button and make a small donation. Don't forget the uh, comments. Love to read them, love to see them and I love to respond to them. Thank you for calling. Thank you. Goodbye.